I don't exactly know what this theory is about. That's why I wanted to take a look at it. That's why I did want to take a look at it. Because I don't actually know what it is about, but I've heard it pop up here and there, so... Let's go! This video is sponsored by the online personal information removal service, Incogni. Protect your data and personal information. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I thought he was gonna say, this video is sponsored by your personal information. <laughs> ...from data brokers and search sites. Use my link in the description to get 60% off Incogni's annual plan. On Tuesday, December 15th, 1970, Season okay. 2, Episode 12, aired of the comedy sketch show, Monty Python's Flying Circus. The title of the, the episode show. was Spam. In the okay. episode, there is a sketch, also titled Spam, in which a husband and wife are lowered on wires into a cafe filled with Vikings. Once sat, the husband and wife ask the waitress about the meals available at the cafe. The waitress proceeds to describe each menu item to the couple. Okay. Nearly every item has the canned meat, Spam in it. Some okay. dishes are just Spam with multiple sides of Spam. Spam, 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 Egg, and Spam. One dish is described as. When the woman customer declares that she does not like Spam and she wants a meal without any, the waitress denies her request, and suddenly, the Vikings around them begin to sing. Spam, 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 Spam. Lovely okay. Spam. Wonderful Spam. The interaction devolves further and further as the Vikings' chants and waitress's screams in support of Spam increase, droning out the conversation into indiscernible absurdity. Then, okay. the sketch essentially ends, and the customer, we can reasonably assume, does not get a meal without Spam in it. Sure. Although this Monty Python sketch had nothing to do with media or the internet, it would strangely and powerfully foreshadow forthcoming conditions of media and the internet, and it would ultimately lead directly to the term spam being used in the internet vernacular. In Wait, the context really? of the media and the internet, Wait. the term spam broadly referred Wait, is that actually how the term came to be? Irrelevant, unwanted, insincere, Money, or repeated communication or content. As a result of the Monty Python sketch, in the 1980s, in early online chat rooms, message boards, and virtual games, users would repeatedly type spam along with other quotes from the Monty Python sketch in order to knock the text of other unwanted users or competitors down and off screen and gatekeep discourse. Huh. Around the same time, That's interesting. The term I spam actually did know. Would be used to refer to the repeated and excessive posting of the same messages on file and message Extra sharing. Extreme history, uh, extra course, word it history. Only helps and is all the more fitting that spam, the canned meat, is highly processed and unhealthy, high in calories, fat and sodium, and low in nutrients. Since the 1980s, media and the internet have, of course, evolved tremendously. Between 1981 and 1989, the number of hosts connected to the internet went from hundreds to hundreds of thousands, with an increase from 80,000 to over 160,000 hosts in 1989 alone. Also in 1989, the World Wide Web was created, which, for okay. the first time, made digital content easily reachable and shareable for the average consumer. Sure. By the mid-1990s, there were over 100,000 websites on the web. Around 40% of American households owned a computer, which was just- Oh my god, the uh, The old... Thick... Screens, man. It's 15% a couple I, years prior. Uh, they just... I don't know, they just feel nostalgic. Suddenly, new opportunities for connection and creativity abounded. For the first time in history, individuals could easily message people across the world in chats, publish and share their art and homemade videos, create digital profiles and digital stores, purchase and download things like movies and books, order yeah. physical goods to yeah. be delivered to their home, sure. and innumerable other unbelievable and world-changing acts. Yeah. Now, as of 2024, it's estimated that around 70% of the global population owns a smartphone. That's roughly 5 billion people. It's also now yeah, estimated that there that. are well over 1 billion websites, and the average person currently spends around 6 hours and 35 minutes online every day. Needless to say, the internet yeah, I believe and internet that. devices have fully consumed us, and the conditions of the internet are crucially important to the human experience. Of course, yes. along with new opportunities for the distribution of enriching things on the internet, so too have new opportunities for the distribution of problems and hazardous content evolved on the internet. That was a pain on the ass to move those CRT monitors? Well, yeah, of course, they're hella fucking heavy. One of which is spam and spam-like media. 
For the sake of clarity, spam and spam-like media here includes anything from unwanted emails all the way to digital content that are- Bro, fuck you speaking about spam emails, man. Fuck you speaking about spam emails. Bro, I keep getting emails in my spam folder and on my business email about fucking- Yeah, literally about fucking. <laughs> That's actually it, about fucking. <laughs> Do not throw up here! Bro! Holy shit, Amani was about to throw up on my keyboard. Bruh, what the fuck? Bruh! It is... Let me open the spam folder. Oh, one is uh, by Abigail. <laughs> Face of an angel wants to hook up. Uh, log in to contact her. Hey, business.kitsonaro at gmail.com. Face of an angel is interested in you. She says, it's time for all naughty boys and G dot dot dot. Oh my god. She just, just wanted to give her opinion. <laughs> Reasonably exploits. Platform algorithms, automation. What the f uh, shrimps? Jesus, bro, that's a religion I can get behind. Shrimp juice. That my Lord and Savior, shrimps is. Door excessive posting. Amen. Often for the sole purpose of views and engagement. The problem of spam might appear somewhat trivial at first, especially when considered against much darker activities uh. and possibilities on the internet. With yeah, the increasing sure. development and thriving of spam-like media points to a deep, holistic problem about- I mean, this is literally why a fucking ad uh, block is necessary at this point. There's just so much bullshit out of- on the internet. Just use an ad blocker, man. ...about the current architecture and future of the internet and humanity at large. The internet, in its current form, does not merely have spam on the menu. The menu is, in many ways, increasingly that of the Monty Python Cafe. All menu items on offer seem to contain spam in some form. And worse, our palates seem to be increasingly burnt and numb by this to yeah. actually desire it, to enjoy less and less of the nuanced flavors that we previously did. As both creators and consumers of media, many of us seem to- I mean, yeah, that makes sense. The more you get of something, the more, um, the less exciting it becomes, right? Like, the more you're exposed to something, the less impressionable you get uh, to that specific thing. To want quicker, easier, and more processed content, which often doesn't challenge or require much of us, and we are increasingly willing to ignore the intentions and consequences of said content. Inspired and led by philanthropic beasts, herds of Viking creators chase watch time as audiences welcome the pillaging with eager eyes. Oh, what the fuck are those eyes, There's man? a theory about the internet that has recently garnered increasing notoriety largely as a result of the mainstream introduction and popularization of generative AI. The theory well, is known is AI, as the then. dead internet theory. The origins of the theory primarily trace back to an anonymous thread created in 2021 on the Agora okay. Roads Macintosh Cafe forum. Its origins, specifics, and conspiratorial nature are rather questionable. But the broad sentiment, After what, it may even be at least that's now, true. feels somewhat valid. Putting aside the conspiratorial and paranoid claims of the theory, most broadly, the theory suggests that most online activity is fake in some way. Either bot okay. activity or AI-generated content created and curated by algorithms. I mean... Yeah, there are a lot of bots out there, man. They are! Even I have bots commenting on my videos. Like, yeah. Because of this, according to the theory, the internet, as a source of unbridled human activity and flourishing, died somewhere around the year 2016. In that same year of 2016, a cybersecurity... Wait, so you're saying there's no human activity on the internet at all anymore? What am I then? What am I? <laughs> what am I? Am I not real? Am I fake? Chat, what are you guys? Are all of you fake? The internet, as a source of unbridled human activity and flourishing, died somewhere around the year 2016. In that same year of 2016, a cybersecurity company by the name of Imperva, in fact, did find that bots 
or software applications that perform automated tasks without human intervention accounted for over half of all online activity. They also found that half, around 30% but... of website visits likely oh, came there from... Oh, there's a lot. He's saying that the majority of activity is bots now. I mean... Mm. But most of it gets blocked by filters. Mm. Bad bots, or programs designed to carry right. out harmful actions like theft and hacking. The other roughly 20% of bots, however, were found to be good bots, or bots that help monitor and upkeep aspects of the internet. This was nearly 10 years ago. We can more than reasonably assume that those numbers have gone up since then. Of course, these percentages include the entire- I mean, in regards of this, have y'all seen fucking Destiny's Skitsu arc video? Have y'all seen that video? Where there's literal Twitter bots interacting with each other? It's insane. That video is insane. I watched like... Half of it, I think, live while Asmon was reacting to it. That shit was so insane. Our internet. You gotta take into account that one bot does 200 times more than the average human on the internet. That's also true. In all true. corners and pockets. So it's not necessarily the case that the majority of the content and websites you personally consume and visit are fake. Assuming you engage in reasonably well curated and stable websites and platforms. But the point is, no matter who you are, how savvy you are, and what you do on the internet, there is no avoiding fake content and fake traffic, and even more so, there is certainly no avoiding I mean, spam-like content. That is also true. I said, I, I, I didn't even fucking sign into it, and I'm getting spam there, emails. In 2024, Jack Conti, the founder and CEO of the creator monetization platform, Patreon, gave a keynote oh. at the conference, South by Southwest, titled, okay. Death of the Follower and the Future of Creativity on the Web. The focus of his presentation was primarily on the development and effects of algorithmic feeds on social media and content distribution platforms. Specifically, Conti's argument is that major platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok have moved primarily into algorithmic ranking-based content distribution feeds and away mm -hmm. from follow-based feeds. In yeah, other words, that's true, that's true. Who actually looks at their recent... Like, if you're on YouTube, right? If you're just on YouTube, you just open YouTube. This, this, isn't, this isn't the people you subscribe to. This is home. You actually have to click on subscriptions to see your latest fucking subscriptions. Whoever fucking uses this anymore? I don't. The fact that uh, fucking home is he recommended here, yeah. Internet content He's is right. distributed based on computer algorithms that rank content. Also, same for Twitter. Same for Twitter. Same for Twitter. For you, anyone following the people you are actually following. And using metrics of engagement like watch time and not based shut, on shut people selectively <laughs> and intentionally curating what is shown to them based on who they follow or subscribe to. As a result, according to Conti, this has caused content creators and their audiences to become increasingly pulled apart in my opinion, Conti says, the follow is not some handy feature of a social network. Yeah, the follows follow don't matter. The follow is foundational architecture for human creativity and organization. Follows don't fucking matter anymore nowadays. Like, literally, follows don't matter. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It matters the views matter. The fucking views matter. It doesn't matter that uh, you have a million fucking followers if only 1% of those people watch you. That's a huge difference. But I feel like that it's always kind of been like this, but m even more now. With the follow becoming less central to content distribution, content creators increasingly need to create for an algorithm rather than for a clear audience or fan base. Uh, disagree. Disagree, because you can literally, for YouTube at least, you can literally uh. replace the word algorithm with audience. Conti says, for the first time since Web 2.0. Because, sorry that I just paused right away before, without finishing my sentence before then. Uh, on YouTube, it matters. Like, how the YouTube algorithm works at the moment is that the, um, the recommendations, your recommendations as a viewer, are based on your watch history. And then YouTube, if, okay, if you guys... 
Okay, say you watch Asmongold, you watch fucking Rosie, and you watch Milky. And then there's another person who watches Asmongold, Rosie, and Milky, and Kitsu. Now the first person is also gonna be recommended Kitsu content. Because the first, uh, the second person had the, the overlapping watch history. That's how the algorithm works. My followers might not necessarily see my posts, and the idea of a subscription started to break down. If a person doesn't receive the thing I make, it's not really a direct true connection between a creator and their fans. It's not really a subscription. The channel of distribution is broken, and it creates another problem too, around creative freedom, because now suddenly my post has to be better than the other posts according to a set of criteria that I don't know or have control of, or even agree with. So instead of thinking, what do I want to make? What lights me up? What is the output that I want to create as an artist? What will my fans love? Instead of thinking about those questions, now, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking what will the ranking algorithm favor? And that, subconsciously or consciously, changes my creative output to achieve the platform's goals. Not my I, goals. I, 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 I personally just completely fucking disagree with this. I said the algorithm does work in a way where it does, the way it is important what your audience does watch and what they do want. It's just wrong. Creator. The primary goal for almost all social media platforms is to make money. The primary means of achieving well, yes. this goal for most platforms is through advertising revenue. And the sure, primary yeah. means of generating, sustaining, and growing ad revenue is by attracting as Hi, many Google. users to the platform and then keeping users on the platform as long as possible. Yes. At the scale of major social media platforms. Also true, um, websites like Twitter and TikTok hate it when you mention other platforms. If you can't even... Twitter works in a way if your initial post has a link in the first post, it will be less important. It will be less pushed out to your followers and into the algorithm in the end. If you mention other platforms, it will be less pushed. It's, it's very stupid. Algorithmic based ranking feeds seems to achieve this the best. As a result, algorithms have increasingly taken control over what we see and the direction in which online media and content goes. We are thus being increasingly led by these algorithms with no clear aim in terms of benefit to the individual or culture at large. The cause and end game are merely profitability. Of course, algorithms are not inherently bad and they could provide great opportunities for things like discoverability for creators and consumers. Furthermore, pursuing okay. watch time and algorithms isn't inherently always bad either, as it can be useful for improving one's work. But a major problem is, under these conditions, one of the forms 99. of media and content that prospers <coughs> is either full-on spam, is spam or media made? that has a flavor of spam to it. In order to <laughs> appease algorithms and either forge or maintain a career and social relevancy, creators might change their content format, category, or topics from what they are primarily interested in to what's popular and what works. An algorithm only works because of humans. It, an algorithm, you literally, I want to emphasize this again, replace the word algorithm with audience, because... If an audience, if a human being isn't fucking interested in what you're making, no way the quote-unquote algorithm isn't gonna, is gonna push it. Literally replace the word algorithm with audience and you are going to have a... not a healthier, but a more understanding view on how shit works, man. Human brain is an algorithm itself. That's also true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Often leading to kind of, copying, yeah. repetitiveness, redundancy, dumbing down, carelessness, or excessively frequent posting. Otherwise, they might risk inevitably being overlooked by the algorithms and forgotten by anyone who is not in their most core audience. That's why the theory is dumb. Yeah, These I guess problems so. of fake traffic, algorithmic disconnect, and spam media have only become increasingly worse with the introduction and mainstream use of gen- Like, it definitely has some merits to it, and- like some form of truth where there is a lot of spam and there is a lot of bots but on the other part bro if your video sucks your video sucks <laughs> generative ai now ai models can message humans in chats and message if you other all watch dumb spam models, that's something you digital yeah digital art and video content create and manage digital profiles and stores determine and execute purchases and economic decisions as well as innumerable other unbelievable and world-changing acts but now, humans are less and less involved. 
Hence, the internet is, at least in the way it once was, dead. In its wake, a new sort of internet is emerging. What this new form will ultimately become, how it will feel, what help and harm, positives and negatives it might cause, will only be known in time. But what does appear to be certain is that AI is only going to get better, and the problems of disconnection, fakeness, and spam-like media are only going to get worse. Okay, so basically what the theory is saying that the old internet, how it used to exist, is dead and uh, a new internet is emerging. That's just fucking stupid. The internet is nothing that can die in that sense. It's just constantly evolving. The internet is a thing that's been constantly fucking um, improved upon, I guess. It's a sort of... Oh, it's just stupid. Okay, this theory is dumb. That robot is booba. Hey, yo! Of course, generative AI is not all bad, and there are countless great applications for it. Both I agree with this. Not all AI is bad. But if we are not careful, more than anything else, our digital diets will continue to become unhealthier and unhealthier. It will be increasingly difficult to hear and make sense of anything, to want to hear and make sense of anything, to find and get what we want to order. It is not hopeless, though. Hopefully, in time, there will mm -hmm. be reasonable regulations around AI and internet media. Hopefully, new technologies will also help mitigate against some of the existing and forthcoming problems and execute effectively on reasonable policies and cultural expectations. If history is to be considered, it seems that this is certainly on the table of possibilities. But of course, if history is to be considered, regulations and new technologies designed to restrain bad actors and bad technologies are always, okay. at least a little, behind the people and technologies they are designed to catch. That is also true. Regulations are lacking behind. I mean, uh, just as we saw in the fucking Twitter, not Twitter, sorry, the TikTok fucking shit recently, right? Where t uh, TikTok took forever to shut harmful trends down. And yes, the fucking government is so behind on regulating AI too. I hate that AI art ruined R3-4 unforgivable. It did? <laughs> oh my god. Perhaps in some sense, at least for now, it is up to us, creators and consumers of content, founders and users of platforms. There is a famous saying that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. A more up-to-date version of this might be that mm -hmm. we are the average of the five creators and five content categories we spend the most time on the internet consuming. Okay, yeah, sure. That that sounds reasonable. Issue is brain rot is most popular in engagement, but that's people, not the algo stuff. That's what I mean! That's what, exactly what I've been saying. Replace the word algorithm with audience. That's like, see? Exactly. Arguably, now and into the future, making decisions about what we do and engage with on the internet will be as crucial as the decisions we make regarding it's our part friends of me, Skizu, yes. Of course, you are a part of his kids. <laughs> you are partially kids. In some sense, this has always been the case, and determining what media we consume has always been crucial. But crucial is a spectrum, and okay. now it is highly. Ultimately, Hi highly who cares what? If the dead no, it is highly what? It's highly what? The media we consume has always been crucial. But crucial is a spectrum, and now it is highly. Ultimately, who cares if the dead internet theory is true or not? Am I stupid? Is he just not finishing the sentence? Am I not understanding the sentence properly? Huh? There is a famous saying that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. A more up-to-date version of this might be that we are the average of the five creators and five content categories we spend the most time on the internet consuming. Arguably, now and into the future, making decisions about what we do and engage with on the internet will be as crucial as the decisions we make regarding our friends and associates. Okay. Of course, in some sense, this has always been the case, and determining what media we consume has always been crucial. But crucial is a spectrum, and now it is highly. Highly. Highly crucial? Yeah, like... 
But that's so weird. Who speaks like this? Ultimately, who cares if the dead internet theory is true or not? Who cares if the old internet yeah. is dead or not? What yeah, matters exactly. arguably is whether we can and will sustain what matters in new ways in the new conditions of the world and technology. And what matters is what matters to us, our humanity yes. at its truest and deepest levels. Yes. As humans, we want to create, communicate, and connect with each other, unabridged and unbridled. We want reasonably healthy and sustainable relationships with others, with ourselves, and with the networks of the world, both physical yeah. and digital. We want. Yeah, human is always naturally wired to want connections. Even if we hate humans, we are naturally wired that honesty, way. Sure. We want genuineness. We want symbiosis. We want prosperity. Symbiosis? Venom? The internet Sorry. is <laughs> and can still be a place where this happens. Of course, there will always be the spam cafes, and spam will likely find its way on most menus, and most of us will likely indulge in it on occasion. But like everything else, with discipline, hope, and effort, we can still eat healthy diets. We can still build beautiful restaurants and eateries I and communities no. with minimal spam on the menus. We are Kitsu, we are Venom! <laughs> no! Venom! We can still break bread together in meaningful ways. In the words of Conti, the hardest lesson I have learned as a creative person and as an operator and CEO over the last 10 years is to know and trust what I want and to be true to that over time. I think my bell rang. Sorry, just a moment. It's easier said than done, but don't let somebody else tell you what you want, because then you'll end up with what they want, instead of what you want. Sure, yeah, be your own person, that's important. I can get behind that. <laughs> On a somewhat more direct, hazardous level, one problem area where spam inevitably shows up for all of us is junk messages. Emails, robocalls, texts, physical yeah. mail, and so on. This yeah. sort of spam, however, yep. is not just annoying and bad tasting, but it can actually be dangerous. It can lead not only to relentless junk mail, but also to parties knowing sensitive information about you, which can lead to things like identity theft, scams, stalking, or yes. harassment. That's why this video sponsor, Incogni, <laughs> a personal information removal service, is such a fantastic fit for this video, and such a fantastic service in general. The reason for the widespread experience of unsolicited, repeated junk mail is because of what are known as data brokers. Without you knowing or giving permission, every time you buy something or fill something out with your information, your name, social security number, login credentials, home address, and so on, the information can then be taken and sold Yo, to it's and 10 by euros. a third party. Oh, you can see it. No! Broker. Information can then be taken and euros. sold to of money doing this. They harvest and collect your data, not to sell things to you, but to sell you to others. In the last yeah. few years- As it is, if the product is free, you are the product. Years, I personally noticed a huge increase in scam-like texts, as well as an email inbox that is nearly impossible to sift through. The good okay. news, legally, you have the right to stop this and have all okay. your information removed from these sites. The bad news, it's essentially impossible to do this on your own. The better good news, Incogni makes it not only possible, but easy for you. All you have to do is go through a short sign-up process, give Incogni permission to work on your behalf. Are they free? <laughs> Wait a moment, are they free? Then you're uh, the product. And then they immediately locate and reach out to these brokers and sites and get your information removed. Okay, As you might but imagine, now you're giving them your information, information removed once might not last forever and might not be a smooth process. But with Incogni's annual plan, they continue oh, to automatically plan. follow okay, up to ensure that your information not only gets removed, okay. but stays removed. You can then track sure. Incogni's progress right on their dashboard as you watch these companies inevitably lose. Click my link in the description or go to incogni.com slash pursuit of wonder and you'll ever get 60% off Incogni's annual plan. And of you'll course, ever use this? as always, thank you so much for watching in general. And this video is sponsored. Oops.
Well, yeah, the video was basically over. Um, nope, never used it, never heard of it, neither have I. I just never give up my information. I do all the time. I do all the time. And if you think you never give out your information, you're on Twitch right now. You're here on Twitch right now. They at least have your email. They at least have your email. Yes, you did use it. And seen any difference in your day-to-day -day life from it? You're delusional if you think you aren't giving out information. Yeah, I, I think so too. Just by being on the internet, you're giving out information. On separate cookies and emails, that's only used for Twitch. Everything is linked to my email. I give this email my consent. <laughs> well, um, overall, I think the that internet theory is dumb. The internet will always be evolving, just like humans will always be improving and, in a sense, evolving. Not an actual evolution way, but you get what I mean. Humans are not on a standstill. Humans are always moving forward. So, yeah, not a fan of the theory. It's a little bit 